Racers, Larry at TJR Sim here, and today we're going over uh, R Factor 2 settings with the Oculus Rift and how much can we get out of it with a higher end system, at least a uh, uh, highest end system you can, I don't know, not the highest end system you can get today, but uh, a really good, uh, you know, 4K build, uh, let's say. So, uh, what we got here, it, as far as hardware goes, we're running a uh, MSI 1080 Ti. It's overclocked as much as I could get. I think it's like around 5, 1580 megahertz and um, running all the time. The CPU is an i7-7820X uh, and it is overclocked uh, 4.3 gigahertz. My RAM is 32 gigs of RAM, so no shortage there. For VR and uh, it's running at 3200 uh, megahertz for X in XMP mode so hardware wise we're there okay so t this time the tables have turned uh, not as much uh, you know the CPU is not being bottlenecked at all I'm, I'm running anywhere from uh, 30 35 percent um, to 50 percent usage so CPU is actually running uh, really strong and uh, doesn't dip out. Now the graphics card, of course, is is what's taking the hit. So I'm gonna give you the settings. Uh, if you are looking for your 90 FPS, if you're if you're in Barf City, if you drop out of 90 FPS, you know, and, and, and it messes with you too much, which you probably not even playing VR if you're one of those persons anyway. Uh, you probably gave up on it by now. But uh, if you are a stickler for 90 FPS, these are the settings you're going to want to keep. And, uh, and the reason I say that is because not all tracks or cars or mods that you have in R-Factor 2 are created equal. Uh, even though, And this is running off the DX11 uh, as well. So let's get into it here real quick and I will show you. So if you are running... Uh, if you're wanting your, your highest end 90 FPS locked in, uh, throw away the key, these are the settings you're going to want to run. So uh, now the three biggest hits as far as your, your uh, FPS drop is really uh, your, your anti-aliasing, which is under video uh, resolution, your post-processing, which is in the setup uh, first over here. So you, actually you can change your anti-aliasing here as well, but anti-aliasing your post-effects those and shadows are your biggest hits for your fps start playing with those chase them around uh you can spend days trying to figure them out but uh the rest your minor hits are really just your road reflection and your environmental and reflection you really don't see those until you start say you know running nighttime or you're running uh, uh, uh low seven o'clock at night or something like that where you're getting the sun coming in uh, reflecting off the track and stuff when the sun's setting or rising so uh but these are the settings you're going to want your post processing will be on actually not in this one it'll be off you want your post effects off and you will want uh these settings here so circuit detail low that actually takes a hit too if you increase it if you're at sebring there's really no hope uh, there is a, it's such a busy track uh, that uh it's 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 just really not sebring um what was the new track that came uh we'll look at it here in a second but uh, some tracks that are, are very intensive a lot of stuff going on on track you're going to want to keep your circuit detail low and, uh, as well as your car count uh around the nine mark so but here we go full 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 for your uh player detail opponent detail and texture detail textures are fine uh texture filter x16 is fine max it out special effects you know that's just a little glow you see around your uh your screen as far as your like a rear view screen that you have uh those little effects uh full that's fine doesn't seem to take a hit at all shadows uh you're gonna want it on low so you can see at least the outside shadows like your trees and stuff like that uh casting onto the track uh, really your inside side shadows of your car they don't start coming into play until you bump this up to medium and that's really going to take a hit on your fps um shadow blur obviously off uh soft particles on high raindrops that's just dependent this is really just a quantity uh so medium is is, is more raindrop so medium's fine um road reflection environment reflection i leave it on high 
and stable horizon I read somewhere about that for VR low was actually the highest setting <laughs> so uh, visible vehicles I have it on 10 I'm actually running nine vehicles on track though uh, including my vehicle now the next setting is of course your uh, video resolution uh, level two is really as high as you want to go once you go to level three level four and five fifth being the highest level uh, and it in, of course gets better the lines are a little bit better but there's not a lot of <clears throat> extra uh, juice for the squeeze kind of thing so uh, it definitely hits your frame rate a lot more but you really don't get a lot out of it uh, past level two so um, and uh, you know you take a hit so leave it at level two uh, if you want to back it off any more, level one would be the lowest you would want to go. Uh, if you turn it off completely, you get way too many jaggies. Uh, so that's that's the settings. Anyway, this is the settings for 90 FPS locked, right? So run that. Hope you hope you enjoy it. Now, if you're someone that likes a little bit more realism in your in your cars and you're okay with it hitting into the 45 FPS every so often, uh, most of the time staying in the uh, 80 to 90 range uh, throughout your drive or your race on the track. Listen up, that's, this is settings for you. So, which is the settings that I have here right now? Um, obviously, I'm gonna change this resolution for this video when I go on track, but your level two anti-aliasing and your post effects on low. Now you can run, I've run post effects all the way up on high with the Rift, uh, but it, it, it taxes it quite a bit, so. Uh, you're going to be into the 45 FPS uh, quite often, probably around 70% of the time. Uh, so uh, low is a sweet spot. Medium, you know, medium, you're you're only you know 20, 30% of the time into the FPS uh, mark. So if if you're okay with it dropping into asynchronous mode, it doesn't bother you, and you want a little bit more um, uh, post effects, a, a little bit more glow around your instruments and all that. Uh, bump it up to medium. To me, it's a little bit, a little extra glowy. Just turning post effects on low is enough to add the richness that you need to the car. So, uh, in the interior of your car and, and, of course, your surrounding areas. And then you couple your reflections on high, uh, everything comes together looking really good. So, uh, and, and just so you know, if you don't really know what the settings are for post effects, what they really mean, here it is. Uh, post uh, processing let none you know is no post process PP effects obviously a low is turning on your glare effects medium is turning on your glare effects and depth of field depth of field is not that important as far as VR goes uh, but you know it does add a little bit more uh, to it I know it is when I look in the rearview mirrors uh, high of course is all your effects are, are turned on up to high so your glare effects and your depth of field is that high and ultra everything's on ultra uh, you'll never need ultra uh, at least not today uh, for VR so uh, high is is overkill uh, medium is is something that's acceptable to run I think uh, for people that don't mind uh, the uh, FPS is dropping you know maybe you know 40 50 percent of the time so uh, in into it so uh, I run low though. Low seems to work the best. So anyway, let's get into the game. Uh, let me change this. 3440. Okay. Game Watch launch it. detected. Loading profile. Oh, now these settings are all with 1.7 super sampling. I forgot to mention that in the at the beginning of the video, but that's what I'm running. Uh, you can run 2.0. If you want, uh, no, there's really no need to run that high. Uh, again, it's one of those things that the juice is not worth the squeeze at uh, two, anything really over 1.7. So, uh, and yeah, honestly, R Factor 2 doesn't seem to get hit too hard with the F, with the drop of FPS when you up the super sampling for some reason. So it seems pretty efficient as far as that goes. What hits it more is is the shadows and the post effects so and anti-aliasing you know the three that i mentioned in the very beginning so uh but right now you're gonna see i'm gonna try to keep around uh the cars as much as i can all the testing has been done on the on the silverstone track here um and uh 
with around 7 o'clock p.m. That way I can get the glare and stuff working the best. So, and, and I'll call out, it should be showing up on the screen there. Yeah, 66 FPS, 45. Let's do it. Oh, I took off too fast. So with the low, uh, shadows on low, you can see, of course, the shadows across the track and stuff. And you will be in the 40, see, it's back out of 45, and then it's back into it, and it's back out of it. So it's, it follows around here, I've noticed in the beginning, uh, until things seem to stabilize more. Um, but this is with nine cars, including myself, on track. But... You know, being that it just goes into the asynchronous mode momentarily, it doesn't stay there, you don't notice it. So if I was to turn off uh, my Oculus tool tray right now off the screen, I wouldn't notice it too, uh, when it dips into the 45 because it stays there for, for less than a second. So, or in sometimes a second. So, as you'll probably see in the counter at the bottom of the screen. If I can catch these guys, but it's good to stay around these guys. That way, you see what's going on on screen. And of course, coming to the front of the track is a little bit more intensive. Depth of field, looking back behind me. Whoa! <laughs> Races in front of me uh, makes a difference too. So. And I am running. Of course, I'm recording doesn't seem to make too much of an effect. I mean, it adds a little bit, of course. Sorry, buddy. Shouldn't be so wishy-washy in your corners. Pick a line and stick with it. <laughs> well, with the reflections being on nice, you get a nice reflection off the curb in here on track. Nice. And with the textures, of course, turned up uh, all the way, you get all the proper lettering on the cars, which looks great. Special effects like the smoke and all that, you know, being on full. That was a 222.68. Okay, I didn't turn that one down. I turned down the sound on the rest of it. <laughs> Square these guys up and make the pass. Mm -hmm. hey, he made the pass, huh? In my way. Alright, so you can see the depth of field, even when you look back behind you, it's not dropping. Well, there you go, drop to 45 a little bit for a second. But often test that just to see because you're what's going on behind you when you put it in a view. Uh, you can, it kind of tells you what's going on. You can see now you come back around the front straight once the paddock, you know, once the uh, uh, track gets spread out a little bit, you know, you're almost alone in some of these cases. Uh, you don't even drop out of the 90 FPS range, so it's just solid. So, you know, obviously, you know, what it tells you is that it has a lot to do with the environment, how many cars are on the track, how many buildings are trying to get uh, resolved on the track at the time. So, when you're at, uh, this is Silverstone, so when, yeah, when you're at Sebring, that's a very intensive, uh, crowded track, even on low, when you set the settings on low, which is as low as you can go. So that one you're going to want to stick with the settings that I, I presented in the beginning uh, for a lock at 90 FPS and you're still going to dip into the 45s here and there at that setting. So post processing off, even shadows off, you'll still hit, uh, or shadows on low rather, you'll still hit in the 45s every so often uh, just because that track is so intensive as far as how many things are going on. Structures are around. The lap was a 210.75. That track, I'm actually a little bit happier running with no shadows on 
and post processing off and everything else on, of course. Caught up with him. Alright, you know, I love R Factor 2. I can play this all day long, so it was fun testing. Uh, but, you know, you don't get to race as much as you as you do the testing, so you're just in and out of tracks and stuff a lot, trying to figure out the settings of what's the optimal for y'all guys, and for me when I get back into just gonna run some races, you know, so. Um, smoothness is there, everything's just buttery smooth when you pass a car, when they pass you, uh, it looks nice and smooth, so let me pass, let this guy pass. Very smooth, just glassy smooth when he goes by me, uh, which is, is actually really good. Our Factor 2 does a good job at that, but being that I have the hardware now, it uh, definitely helps. But now you're pretty much, if you have the latest CPU, uh, you're really just limited on your GPU right now. Even if you're running, say, like an i7 8700K, which, you know, I see people overclock those up to around 5 gigahertz because they run, I think, 4.7 at boost. Uh, which is actually higher than what I'm running here on this one. Um, yeah, they, they don't have any problem as far as uh, CPU being the bottleneck. It's just the GPU. So, we'll wait for the 2080s to hit the shelves and and uh, see if this improves, improves it. So, I'll be doing more testing with the 2080 Ti. Uh, so, stay tuned. And uh, I'll let you know how that turns out since I am not CPU bound anymore. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this look at our effect. That was a 2.11.05. Sorry, he interrupted me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the look at our Factor 2 with uh, more of a mainstream enthusiast build PC of what you can get out of it. Unfortunately, with our Factor 2, you can't get out as much as you hope. Yeah! <laughs>